Galaxy Fighter. This lesson is called File Organization. As you know, folders are used inside Finder to keep track of and organize files. Xcode, on the other hand, uses groups to organize files. Groups and folders are not the same thing, but neither are they totally independent of each other. This confuses many programmers. Let's take a look at the Xcode. Here are the main areas. It is in the navigator area that we make groups to organize the files. What you see in the navigator area is not the same thing as you will see in the finder. Let's take a closer look. Here is an example of what you might see in the navigator area in Xcode and the corresponding project folder in Finder. Here is a group called Libs and the corresponding folder. But here is a group called Supporting Files and there is no corresponding folder in the Finder. In fact, the Supporting Files group in this example contains the files main.m and prefix.pch. But as you can see, these two files are directly inside the project. Here are two groups called Products and Frameworks that have no presence in the Finder. So, the conclusion is that Xcode and Finder are different. A group is not a folder. Observe also that the groups are yellow while the folders are blue. Let's see what Apple has to say about groups. In Xcode 4 User Guide, you can read that Open the Project Disclosure Triangle to see the groups, folders and files in the project. This means that you can see three types of items inside Navigator Area. The yellow groups, the blue folders and the files. A group appears in the Project Navigator as a yellow folder icon. The group does not represent a folder on disk. Moving files on disk into and out of folders does not affect the content of the groups in the Project Navigator. It seems that groups and folders do not affect each other. But as you will see later, this is not entirely true. A file in the Project Navigator is a reference to a file on disk. This is good to know. In fact, I think that also groups point to something. Each group points to an associated folder in the Finder. Apple calls this associate folder the Destination Groups folder. Let's start by looking how groups and folders are coordinated with each other. Because groups and folders are different, you must coordinate when you want to add or remove files. This is done using these two dialog boxes. In fact, if you can understand these two dialog boxes, you have understood everything there is to know about groups and folders. But they are not so easy to understand. Take a closer look at these dialog boxes. What do the different alternatives really mean? In the first alternative, they talk about Destination Groups folder. What is a Destination Groups folder? We said that group and folders are separate. But as you can see here, it seems that the group is somehow tied to some folder in the Finder. In fact, what Apple calls Destination Groups folder is what I have called the Associate folder before. Within this parenthesis it reads, if needed. What does that refer to? I don't know, but if you find out, please let me know. Take the next alternative. Create groups for any added folders. OK, so if I add a folder to the navigator area, then a group will be created. But what if this folder has subfolders? Will groups for them be created as well? The answer is yes, even though it is not clearly explained in the dialog box text. 
Take the next alternative. Create folder references for any added folders. What does that mean? That means if you choose this alternative and drag a folder inside the navigator area, you will not create a yellow group, instead you will create a blue folder. This is not always so good as we will see later. Let's make a little summary. The Xcode group hierarchy is more or less a purely visual organization system. It has no direct effect on your actual file hierarchy inside Finder. But each group in Xcode has an associate folder in Finder. When you drag a file into the group and choose the copy items box, it is in the associated folder that the file copy ends up. Thus, you could, if you wanted to, have one folder in the Finder with all your source files, resources, etc. And then in Xcode, you could have an elaborately organized hierarchy to display your source files. But you could also have an elaborately organized hierarchy in Finder and have the group inside Xcode reflect that hierarchy, more or less. No matter which strategy you use, you normally want your resources to form a flat structure in your package contents. The last sentence might be unclear. What is meant by a package? A package is a directory hierarchy treated as a single object in the Finder. Let's take a look. Here is an application icon called Labs World. But did you know that this in reality is a directory that contains many folders and files? To see that, right click on the icon and choose Show Contents. The contents contains some folders and files. One of the folders is Resources and inside you will see all the resource files that this application needs in one long flat structure. A flat structure makes the resources directly accessible to your code. You don't have to think where the different files are located. You access them simply by using their name. Let's summarize everything. When you drag a file into a group and check this box, Xcode copies the file into the group's associated folder. Use this when you add sounds, images and so on. Keeping as much as possible of what your project needs inside the project folder is safer than relying on a file that's outside the project folder. If you uncheck the box, Xcode does not copy the file into your project folder. Instead, it relies on a file that's outside the project folder. Use this when you add frameworks or sprite sheets. Because when a framework or a sprite sheet changes, you want your project to be updated automatically. The choice of these two radio buttons matters only if what you're adding to the project is a folder. When you drag a folder, and the first radio button is chosen, Xcode creates a single group, and each file that the folder contains appears individually within the package content directory. This is what I normally use when I drag a folder from Finder into Xcode. When you drag a folder and the second radio button is chosen, then Xcode creates a single blue folder within the package contents. This means that the resources inside the folder won't be at the top level of the bundle, but in a subfolder of it. Your code must specify the folder name when loading such a resource. That's why I normally never use this option. Let's now apply what we have learned. This is what I normally want. 1. To separate Apple stuff, Cocos 2D stuff and my own stuff apart from each other. 2. Separate my classes from my resources. 3. Separate my resources into sounds, images, fonts, particles, 
sprite sheets, icons and texts. 4. Separate my classes into a structure that reflects the organization of my project. I normally don't mess around with Apple stuff in the Finder. Instead, I use a group inside Xcode. As you can see, I have a group called Apple here. And I have put all groups that belong to Apple here. I have Cocos 2D stuff in the Libs group and my own stuff in the Bob group. Inside Bob I have two groups, my resources and my classes. Normally I make my resources in the Finder and drag the whole folder into Xcode where it is automatically turned into a group. When I add new resources like sounds and images, I drag them into the corresponding group and make sure that it is copied into the corresponding folder via the previously mentioned dialog box. When it comes to my classes, I usually organize them via groups in the beginning of the project, when I do not yet know my organization. But later, when the organization crystallizes, I change the groups to folders. Let's look at a simple example. We are inside Finder. We have a folder called Bob, which contains two subfolders. My classes, which is empty, and my resources, which has seven empty subfolders, which I normally use when I make a game project. Fonts, icons, images, particles, sounds, sprite sheets, and texts. Let's now go to Xcode and make a new project. A Cocos 2D project. Let's call it something. Lake. Let's make it a little smaller. And here is our lake folder. Open it and adjust the size. And if you look inside, you will see some files and folders, which are similar but not the same as the groups and files in the Xcode's navigator area. For instance, frameworks and products are not present here. Supporting files is not present here either. The two files in the Finder we do not want to mess with. They will stay here exactly as they are. But these classes, App Delegate, Hello World Layer, Root View Controller, and Game Config, or something that we want to put in the Bob folder. Let's open Bob and put it next to the Lake folder. Move the classes into the My Classes folder. The references in Xcode to these files are now pointing at the wrong place. So delete them. Drag the Bob folder into Navigator area. And make sure the copy items is checked. And click on Finish. We have now made a copy of our Bob folder inside the Project folder. So we can remove the original one. Let's clean up a bit by collecting everything from Apple into a group. Right click in the navigator area and create a new group. Call it Apple. Drag everything except Bob and Lips into this group. 
Now we have three groups, Apple, Bob and Lips. All Cocos 2D stuff is inside Lips. Open that group and if there is anything you don't want there, for instance Cocos Live, then delete it. Now we have a structure, Apple, Lips and Bob. And normally we will not touch anything inside Apple and Lips but only work with the Bob group, that is with my classes and my resources. Let's take one resource. Here we have fish.png and drag it inside images. Make sure to check the copy items checkbox. Finish. If we go to my resources, images, we see the fish.png file. And that's how you will normally add resources to your project. Let's also make a new class and put it into my classes. Make a new group, call it startup, drag the classes into the group. As you can see, nothing has happened in the finder. The startup group is just a fake container that helps us organize in Xcode. Let's make a new group. Call it navigation. Let's make a new class. Call it welcome. Here it is created. And in the finder as well. But with no folder. All the files are just laying flat. But in Xcode we distinguish the files using these two groups. Let's build and run so that we see that we have not destroyed anything and that the compiler does not complain. And as you can see it works. So everything is as it should be. And now we have a nice organization for our project. Thank you for watching.